Hi, this is Dr. Kat Vlies from Central New Mexico Community College. This is video L in a series of videos on the heart. From this point till the end, which is video N as in Nora, we're going to focus on cardiodynamics. Before we can start playing with formulas, let's go over some very important definitions, starting out with cardiac output. This is a term that you're going to hear quite a bit, especially if you're going to work in a hospital environment and take care of patients there. Cardiac output refers to the amount of blood our heart pumps out per minute, per minute. And that on average should be about five liters per minute. You'll hear this term a lot, cardiac output, in a hospital situation or if you work in an environment where um, you might be interacting with cardiac patients a lot. Um, because cardiac output really gives us an idea of how efficient our heart is, how well is it pumping, and how well is it pumping blood out, and enough blood, I should say. Now, cardiac output depends on two factors, and that is stroke volume and heart rate. Stroke volume is again an amount of blood, but this time the amount of blood pumped out per beat. Cardiac output is the amount of blood pump, pu pumped out per minute. Let's underline this so that you get this. So cardiac output has a time component, while um, stroke volume relates to the amount of blood pumped out per beat. And that tends to be on average about 70 mils. And the other factor that influences cardiac output is the rate at which our heart beats. And we will decide that the average is about 75, 70 to 75 beats per minute. Now we can put these factors that we just listed, cardiac output, stroke volume, and heart rate in a formula, which you probably should never ever forget again, as long as you take care of patients. And so cardiac output is equal to the product of stroke volume and heart rate. If we go through the math, then stroke volume of about 70 mils per beat, 75 beats per minute for the heart rate, that gives us a bit over 5,000 milliliters per minute. And remember that there are a thousand mils per liter. So about five liters per minute is what our cardiac output equals to. Stroke volume and heart rate in each one of them are actually affected by a variety of things that we will be discussing in the remaining videos. Let's briefly go over what is meant by cardiac reserve. Cardiac reserve is the difference between the maximum cardiac output of a person minus the cardiac output that we see at rest. So when you're sitting around in your chair, you have your resting out cardiac output. And you, when you push yourself really, really hard, hard um, you have your maximum cardiac output. If we take the difference between these two, then typically an average person with an average type of lifestyle will have a cardiac reserve that's about four to five times that of the resting cardiac output. On the other hand, as you can imagine, people who train all the time are going to have a much, much, much higher cardiac reserve. We need to address one more important formula before we can move on with cardiodynamics, and that's the formula for stroke volume. Stroke volume is the difference between end diastolic volume and end systolic volume. If you listen to the word or the term end diastolic volume, it tells you, tells you it's the volume of blood left in the heart when it has finished relaxing. Um, or at the end of relaxation, so right before it contracts. But there's also another volume that we need to consider, and that's end systolic volume. That is how much blood is left in the heart after the heart has contracted and ejected the blood. So are we always going to have some blood that, leave, that is left behind um, after contraction? And the answer to that question is yes. 
Of course, a person with a healthy heart will have a much smaller end systolic volume than a person with a heart that is not healthy at all. A person that has a poorly functioning heart more than likely is going to have a pretty high end systolic volume. A person that doesn't have a heart that contracts very well is going to see a number that is much larger than 50 milliliters per beat. So stroke volume is the difference between these two numbers. And again, try to think about this rationally and logically when you're taking tests and you're nervous and you might think, oh, I've forgotten my formulas. Remember, end diastolic volume, that volume will always be higher than end systolic volume. The volume of the, or the amount of blood in the heart at the end of relaxation will pretty much be the maximum amount of blood in the heart at all times. Now we should take a look at what some things are, what some factors are that can change the um, end diastolic volume and end systolic volume. If the diastole of the ventricles is pretty lengthy, then clearly we're going to see that there, there is more time for the blood to trickle into those uh, ventricles. Also, if the pressure in the veins is high compared to average pressure, let's say we're exercising and the walls of our, of our vessels are con contracting a bit more, the venous pressure will be higher, which allows also for more blood to be returned to the heart. The end systolic volume, we want as low as possible, obviously. And that's going to be impacted by, for instance, the pressure in the aorta and the pulmonary trunk. If the pressure in the aorta and the pulmonary trunk is high, as is the case in people who suffer from high blood pressure or hypertension, it's going to be really hard for those ventricles to get the blood out. And therefore, we might see that the end systolic volume is much higher in people with hypertension. The other thing to consider is how forcefully can the ventricles contract? If they're in very good shape and they have the ability to really forcefully contract, clearly they're going to be able to overcome the pressure in the arteries very easily and eject even more blood. Know your formulas, know your formulas, know your formulas. I cannot stress this enough. Remember, if you know what cardiac output equals to, which is stroke volume times heart rate, you can tease apart stroke volume and plug in its formula. And so therefore cardiac output is the difference between EDV and ESV, put those in parentheses, multiplied by heart rate. You're going to need this formula or these formulas when we learn about blood pressure in the next chapter. You're going to need these formulas in order for you to understand your patient's problems with blood pressure in the future. This wraps up the introduction to cardiac output. We're now going to focus on especially stroke volume and heart rate, and that will wrap up our chapter on the heart.